Hi all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at an Xbox that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. Um, it was pretty cheap, it was about 30 bucks, got four controllers with it, uh, but it has a problem. There's a dead hard drive. So it turns on, makes a screeching noise, sounds like the bearings are done. So today we're going to replace the hard drive in this Xbox and make it work again. Okay, so here we've got the Xbox. Nothing special about this, standard Xbox. So we'll flip it over. Front looks normal, looks good. So let's swap the hard drive. So one special thing that I did find about this Xbox when I picked it up, and I did open it previously, is it does have a mod chip inside of it. So I'll show you guys that when we get to it. But for now, let's flip this thing over and let's get it open. So the first thing you're gonna need is a Torx screwdriver. I can't remember the exact size, but it is the star drive bit uh, that most consoles use to lock them. So we'll take those screws out. There are six screws on the bottom. The first two here, as you can see, are pretty straightforward. They're actually hidden under the stickers. So you'll need to punch a hole through the, the stickers to get them. And the others are underneath these rubber feet here. So just peel those off. They should peel off pretty easily, these ones did. So we'll take those off. That's that one. All right, same screws again. So just get these ones out. So these screws are really long. Uh, all six of them go all the way through to the top of the case. Uh, just put those to the side. You don't want to lose these because it's going to be really hard to find replacements for these screws because they're so big. Uh, so I'll take this one out. And one, one more. Yep. Okay, so we've got that. So once you've got all the screws out, just flip it back over. And the top of the case should just pop off. It can be a little difficult sometimes to get this off, especially if you haven't had it off before, uh, but it just comes off like that. So there we go. So this hard drive has been replaced at some point. It's 120 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda, uh, but it's dead. Okay, so to take the hard drive out, we're gonna pull this IDE cable out right here can be a little bit tricky to get out, but once you've got that out, it should be easy enough to get the power cable out. So we'll just pull that out here. Uh, there's a little runner down the side uh, for the cable, so you can just pull that out of the way. Now the hard drive caddy should just lift straight out. Um, there's nothing else holding it in, so there's no clips or anything. It should just pull straight off, and we'll put that to the side. Now I promised I'd show you guys something cool. Once I take this IDE cable out of the DVD drive, We'll take this out and I'll show you what's underneath. So we'll just put that to the side there. We won't bother on doing the power. Now see the red board there. So this is actually an Aladdin Advance V1.0 V1.6 mod chip. This is an Executor 2 mod chip, I believe. I've never actually used an Xbox with a mod chip like this before, so it should be fun to find out what we can do with it. Uh, looks like it's all installed nicely. It's a pretty neat job, actually. See the cables soldered to the board there, uh, up into the chip there. This was a really nice surprise, so I did not know that this mod chip was in this Xbox when I purchased it. Okay, so let's swap this hard drive out. So grab the hard drive caddy, and you can see there'll be four screws holding the hard drive in. So two on one side, two on the other. Um, you just need to pull those out. Uh, you need to use a smaller Torx bit for this. This is actually using... I think the next size down to get that out. So we'll take that out. Let's grab the first one. Got that. We'll do the second one. This should be pretty easy to get out. Not in tight. There's no Loctite or anything holding these together. It's just standard computer screws, really. So we'll just grab the last two of these screws out here. Got that one, and number four. Okay, so we'll get that out. Uh, once you've taken the screws out, the hard drive should just fall out of the caddy. Now this hard drive is dead, as I said, so I can shake it around and I can hear the bearings rattling. Uh, when I turn it on, it makes a terrible screechy noise. So we're going to chuck that one in the bin. So we'll just put that there. 
Okay, so this is a replacement hard drive I purchased from eBay. Nothing special, just an eBay job. It's 120 gigs, so it's exactly the same size as the one that I took out. Uh, so this arrived yesterday, just in time for the video. So, you know, there it is. It's a Mac Store, 120 gig drive. Obviously well used. I don't think these things are made anymore. And it's wrapped up in a hell of a lot of sticky tape and anti-static bags, so it's going to be a bit of a wrestle here to get this out. Sticky tape here. Yep. Oop. It's not actually a bag. Okay. Some more tape here. Just bear with me while I try and unwrap this drive from its bag of doom. Alright. Finally liberated okay so sounds good check it around doesn't make horrible rattly noises like the last one did so let's put this together putting it together is the same as pulling it apart but in reverse surprise surprise so we'll just put these screws back in probably should speed the video up for this bit but I don't know if I can be bothered That one. Halfway there. Two to go. And the last one. Okay, that's it. So to put this back together, you've got to put the DVD drive in first because the hard drive caddy actually sits on top of part of the, the DVD drive caddy. Make sure you plug your cables in before you seat it back in because this one can be pretty fiddly to plug in after you've put it in. So just make sure that the, the corner pegs uh, sit down over the little risers uh, in the bottom. It helps seat it properly. Then once that's in, just drop the hard drive caddy back in place. Um, you got to make sure that you pull the, the power cable through the little notch on the side here. Uh, it just allows you to pull it through and then you can sit it flush under the clips on the side. So once you've got that in, make sure you have enough slack for your power cable. So if you don't have enough slack, you can just pull it through a bit more like this because I don't have enough slack. Pull that through pop that into the, the clips and then just uh, plug that in but let me check something so when you put the hard drive in you want to make sure that the jumper is set to the master drive I've heard that if you leave it on cable select it won't work uh, so just make sure that's on master uh, if it isn't you want to change it now so you don't have to pull it apart again later and change it so just double check that your jumper's on master then plug that back in and there you go. So, now it's time to do the power test. Let's plug it in and see if it still works. So the power goes in, just put that out of the way. Uh, plug your video cable in. I'm just using a cheap eBay component cable at the moment. Alright, so this is this is one of the Duke controllers that I got with it. So I got two of these. Um, they're in really good condition. So the thumbsticks, the buttons, the, the triggers, everything's really good. So I gave them a bit of a clean and I couldn't be happier. Um, they're actually hardly used, I'd say. Uh, you're also going to need one of these. So this is Slayer's Evo X uh, Xbox boot disk. Uh, this will only work if your Xbox is actually chipped or modded. Uh, maybe even soft modded as well, so you need to boot off this disk uh, to prepare the new hard drive and it will set up the dashboards and all the files for you. So, got that plugged in. So, just a quick overview of my setup. I've got an iScan VP50 at the top and I'm using a RetroTINK 2X uh, to take the output from my consoles into the scaler. It works really well, uh, especially for 240p consoles, so the RetroTINK 2X does a really good job. 
uh, and the VP, iScan VP50 just gives me the HDMI output. So this is error 16, so this is the clock cannot be set, which makes sense because we've replaced all the hard drive, uh, so there are no files on here, so it cannot set the clock, sorry. If I can get this disk in, looks like I've pushed the DVD drive down a little bit too far, so the front door's catching on the front plate. So let me just try and lift that up a little bit. Okay, all right, so that should work. Okay, so we'll boot off this Slayer Evo X boot disk. We'll need to reboot. So to enable the mod chip, uh, you actually have to hold the Xbox power button down for one second. So if you press it once and the ring on the front goes green, you're starting without the mod chip. If you hold it down for a second, the ring on the front will turn yellow, and that means that the mod chip is enabled. So that it won't boot off the disk unless the mod chip's enabled. And you'll also know that you've been successful with the mod chip when under the Xbox logo you can see Executor 2 there. That tells you that the mod chip is enabled. So this is the dashboard that we get. Now we want to go down to number three, which is a new install slash full rebuild. We'll select that. Uh, select the first one. So this is an upgraded hard drive. A uh, bit of a warning here, just telling you that this will kill any software and soft mods that you have. So we know this. And then we'll select 3A1, which is the full rebuild. So we'll hit that. Uh, another warning. Are you sure? Are you sure? We'll hit yes here. Then once we've done that, it's going to spend, you know, five or six minutes copying files from the disk to the Xbox, so we'll skip through that once it's formatted the drives. This can take quite a while. Okay, so now we've skipped that. Uh, we're going to try and boot the Xbox, and we should still see another error, because I forgot to lock the hard drive. So, we'll get... Yep, error number five, which means the hard drive is not locked. So the Xbox actually checks to see if the hard drive is locked to the Xbox. So if you do swap the hard drive, you need to basically pair the hard drive with the motherboard. It uses some kind of key uh, to lock the drive to the Xbox. So you can't go swapping drives and Xboxes around. So we'll just reboot uh, back into the dashboard with the boot disk. Again, executed to tells you the mod chip is actually enabled. Okay, this time we'll go down to apps upgrades, lock and format. Then we want to choose lock and unlock. Choose lock unlock, and we're going to lock this hard drive. So this isn't permanent. You can unlock it again just by coming into the dashboard and choosing unlock. All that locking does is allow the original Microsoft dashboard to boot uh, with a non-standard hard drive. So that's done. And we'll just reset that. And now we'll boot into the standard Microsoft dashboard. So this time... Instead of Executor 2, you'll see Microsoft branding there, so that tells you that the mod chip is disabled and the Xbox is going to boot as normal. And of course, with the, uh, with the standard firmware running, it can't read the copied CD, so we'll take that out. And we'll put in an original game. We'll just make sure this Xbox still works. So I've got a Halo here. Now this is the original Halo. We'll put that in. Unfortunately, I don't have Halo 2 on the original disc. Hoping to get that soon. So we'll put Halo 1 in. And we'll boot that up. Hopefully it should start. It does. Alright, we get the boot screen. Apologies for my sound setup. Um, something's gone wrong and it's a bit clicky. Uh, 
everything seems to be working as normal. Sure, that's loading. It sure is. Okay, guys, we'll save you the loading screens, uh, but that's it. So that's an, a hard drive changed and an Xbox that still works. Okay, guys, there you have it. We fixed the Xbox, we've swapped a hard drive, uh, we've installed a new dashboard with the Microsoft dashboard as well. Uh, you can see behind me it's all working as expected, and that's it, we're done. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.